evening. Our top story this week. In Alaska, the child protective industry is going to get more money from the federal government for snatching Native American children. In Arizona this week, I'm afraid that the problem was apparently much worse than we had previously thought, as the way they handle incoming calls to the child abuse hotline goes under the microscope. And with CPS agents getting caught leaving thousands of documents in a Phoenix alley, leaving state officials no choice but to overhaul CPS. And although the state had data on these problems for years and the government just ignored it, Governor Jan Brewer is determined to assign blame for the failures to whoever the probe deems is responsible, but with all fingers pointing against CPS boss Clarence Carter. Governor Brewer is standing by her man and will therefore give Clarence Carter the benefit of the doubt. In depth this week, in Massachusetts, two CPS agents are fired after a kid who was under their watch went missing in September, only to be notified by school officials that the kid was gone this past week. The child protective industry is now combing through the cases of the fired workers to see if perhaps they screwed up any more of their caseloads. The governor of Massachusetts says that these CPS agents had no excuse for failing this kid, and he's actually vowing a full probe into the child protective industry, of which they will probably find a lot considering the fact that the Massachusetts child protective industry is ranked fourth from the bottom in the entire country, which is apparently driving CPS officials nutty and has them scrambling to cover their tracks in regards to a slew of recent screw-ups. The commissioner of DCF is saying that it's not his fault and that he can be objective in a top-down review of the child protective industry's failures. And like Jan Brewer, Governor Deval Patrick is standing by his man too. In California, a Times report finds that those living in foster homes run by private agencies are a third more likely to be abused than our kids in homes run by the state. In Connecticut, the child protective industry launches a probe into their recent fuck-ups, and ADHD cases in the United States apparently soared during a 20-year drug marketing campaign by the big pharmaceutical companies. In Canada, the governor of Manitoba finally gets the inquiry report into how a foster child who was returned home fell through the cracks, and a roundtable of experts is set to study the deaths of 145 kids in Alberta's child welfare system since 1999. In Australia, a couple who tried to sue the child protective industry for stealing their kids and throwing them into foster care where they were molested is thrown out by a judge. In England, Lord Justice Mumby probes a family court secrecy after a mother was forced to have a cesarean so British social workers could snatch her baby and put it up for adoption. The Norfolk Council child protective industry can't handle their caseloads. And a British social worker is struck off the register for using his mobile phone to take nasty pictures up women's skirts. In entertainment news this week, Charlie Sheen's ex Brooke Mueller believes the child protective industry is out to get her when what they really want is the kids. In Kentucky, a foster mother is arrested after a 17-month-old in her care is taken to the hospital unresponsive and with brain damage. In Massachusetts, a foster father is busted for pretending to be a 14-year-old boy so that he could get girls to strip for him over their webcams, and he managed to get over a hundred young girls online to do it. In South Carolina, a foster mother is arrested for burning and locking up kids and keeping an abused child in a doghouse. The trial of a Michigan foster mother who was accused of murdering a foster child back in 2011 has been delayed until April. Another Michigan foster mother leaves two kids in a van with the engine off while temperatures were in the 20s. And two New York CPS agents who were charged with negligence in the death of a child in 2010 will see no jail time but have to do community service instead. In New York, a fund is set up for a developmentally disabled girl who had her teeth pulled out by her foster father. In Texas, the case is reopened after the investigation into a death of a foster child wasn't thorough enough, and the state decides to punish the foster care agency in that case by making sure that the agency will no longer be getting any foster kids or money, which is causing overflow issues at the other agencies who now have to take up the slack. And finally, tonight, a Texas family court judge gets away with changing dates on documents to hide delays in her rulings. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.